Hello, folks, and welcome to game two of Direwolves vs. Avant. So I am Husey. Joining me is the lovely again Nightfall. Awesome. I love, love being lovely, like I said last game. Oh. And You I'm... are lovely, Nightfall. Thanks, Husey. You're lovely too. Husey, ex Nightfall fanfic in before. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> we'll straight into these pick and bands. Here we go. We do have Bologna banned away from Avant right away. And then Sylvanas banned away on the side of the Direwolves as well. So some interesting bands there. Um, we really Bologna and Sylvanas, two of the strongest gods in the meta right now. Uh, not really too unexpected to see them there, but I'm surprised that Bologna was was banned out. Um, we didn't see it in play last game. We generally see kind of uh, strong things from the last game banned out in these invitational ladder matches. But Ares and Neath both banned out as well. Avant taking away Ares from the Diwils and Diwils taking away Neath. But Hornbat's locked in first from Rowe. He's very strong on that along with his Awelix. So he does a lot of nice work with that. A lot of nice zoning with that as well mm -hmm. with the Fino Evil and the Sacred Monkey. But Geb and Medusa logged in, locked in from the Diwils. Kiki doing excellent work with Medusa last game. And now... Yeah. Now, Barkas and Jibalanke immediately locked in from Avant as well. These picks and bands are flying in. I think this was another... Oh, no. Not too sure what... Uh, but yeah, yeah, they're locking in very, very quickly. So, uh, like you said, uh, Humbat's very, very good with the uh, zoning. Like we saw from El Chuckles last time, the Fear No Evil was so good. And the mobility of Humbats is just so strong. Uh, Shibalanke, so good late game. I uh, Like I learned from the SPL, the way to ward Shibalanke is with his passive, he pretty much has a 7th item slot because of that stacking physical power gained from kills. He's got 30 physical power at max stacks. That's essentially an Executioner or a Rage. And that's, look at these picks massive. now. Look at these picks now. And Athena picked up from... Dials. That was going through the third band stage. Agni Whoa. and Apollo were banned out there. So that's going to be an Athena jungle and a Kronos solo uh, right in the mid lane. So mm -hmm. uh, the Apollo banned away. I expected that to happen because Yada's Apollo is insane. We saw that last game. His split pushing was incredible as well as being able to get across to team fights with that across the skies. The Athena and the Medusa pick up again. So even though Athena is not going to be in the duo lane, he's still going to be in the jungle, still going to be able to get those taunts off. It's just going to be Kiki needing to adjust his positioning to be behind the Athena when he wishes to use that petrifying team fights. But that combination is still there, and it is deadly, folks. Mm-hmm. Kronos for Yada. So Yada, like we mentioned last game, he loves his carry solos because he's so used to being an AD carry and. Cronus is just so strong, and he's going to be up against a Guan Yu in the solo lane coming out from Sporks. So, very, very interesting. And Bark has picked up for Biggie. That initiation with the belly flop is just so good. Um, oh, and Poseidon as well for Achita. Poseidon oh. as well for Achita. That's going to be a massive factor in the team fights. If we take a look at Direwolves, they've got a lot of single target damage. Now, Wizards Ra can provide some area damage, but it's in a straight line through the through the Searing Pain Ultimate and through the um, Celestial Beam. Beam. There we go. Got it. But he does have great sieging potential with his heals, the Solar Blessing. So they're going to be very good at uh, picking off targets. And in, in team fights with the Double Guardians as well, uh, as, well as well as the heals, it's going to be, it's going to be a case of um, just keeping Yada and Kiki safe in the team fights and allowing them to pick off the squishies uh, in the team fight, and even maybe take out a couple of the frontliners. The thing I like from Avant is Sporks' is Guan Yu. He's going to be able to provide similar heals to Ra, maybe even more, depending on the itemization that Avant goes. As well as this, they've got Jibalanke for subfloor, and he's going to come online intensely in the late game. Cronus will also come online, but Jibalanke, as you said, basically having a seventh item slot with his passive, going to do lots of physical damage. And as we all know, ADCs are incredibly, incredibly strong in this current meta, getting a bit yeah. of nerf to their items um, in the next patch. But still, at the moment, Jibalanke incredibly strong. I'm really it's... looking forward to the the row of cheetah um, combination with the Fino Evil and Poseidon. Yeah, that's going to be the thing to look for in this game, guys. We are about to jump straight into this match. We will be right back. Just a few moments while we load straight into this match.
Welcome back, folks, to game two of Avant Guard taking on the Diwals. Diwals did take out A1 in a very exciting finish. A surrender vote forced out from Avant Guard, something we <sighs> we've never seen in in a in a cast. Now, I am Husey. Joining me again is Nightfall. Hello. So that was welcome that back game in. one though. Yeah, that game, game one. Pretty much it was game one exciting. is the only thing we can say about it. It was <laughs> plays made and just all around beautifulness. But unfortunately, yeah. surrender vote, like you said, from Avant. And that was 24 minutes into the game, I think. Was it further yeah. than that? I don't remember. So, but It was something have... to that nature. Yeah. We... Game number two now. And uh, Athena Jungle, she is so strong. She, her yeah, she's clear such is great. a diverse pick as well. Mm -hmm. she, she, her clear is great. Her ganking potential with uh, Preemptive Strike is great. And she can gank from anywhere on the map with that Defender of Olympus. And she's got that Taunt, which is more or less OP right now. So <laughs> it's, it's such a great pick. And Direwolves do have it on that side. But on the side of Avant, they do have Sporks on... Guan Yu, which is strange. We haven't seen a Guan Yu solo, I think, at all through the Invite League? I'm not uh, we too have. Sure. They got it solo, okay. played it in a match against the Direwolves, I believe. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. anyway, yeah. speaking we'll of. Well, yeah, yep. speaking Sorry. of <laughs> the Guan Yu in the solo, let's go ahead and introduce our teams now as they start up their buff camp. So on the side of Avant Guard, we have got Sporks in the solo lane as Guan Yu. Biggie will be your support Barkus. Ro is your jungle Hunbats. Ochida is your mid lane Poseidon and Subfloor rounds out the duo lane on Jibalanke. And on the side of Dire Wars, in the solo lane, we have Yada as the Kronos, and in the jungle will be El Chuckles as Athena. Mid lane is Wizard on his famed Ra with his hot Ra snipes. And Richard Castle and Kikio Mio will be our duo lane of Medusa and Gib. Yeah, so we can see that Rose rotated into the middle lane already. He has a tendency to get to the middle lane around one minute or maybe just beforehand. Pick up some mm -hmm. nice farm there. He, he, It's a real trust thing between him and Sporks in the solo lane. He trusts Sporks to stay alive in the solo lane. And he can just go around, rotate buffs. And that's, that's what enables him to get to level 5 before three minutes. Yeah, he, he'll usually rotate about a quarter of the way through level 2, and then he'll leave Sporks in a 2v1 situation where he's going to get more XP than his opponent. But like we saw from El Chuckles, he mirrored that rotation, so both solo laners will be equal on XP. Oh, and Tamp's <laughs> back camp's being taken uh, by both teams here, so no steals going on like we saw last game. And mm, it's a bit more of a vanilla start. Yeah, everything's yeah, very standard, very vanilla, very plain, but still tastes nice. So, mm, <laughs> nothing too aggressive. Oh, actually, I say that, and Biggie jumps in with a belly flop, gets a little bit of damage back onto Kiki. Hmm. So, we see Richard has the mark of the Vanguard, like we saw Biggie pick up last game, and... Uh, and yeah, he, he needs it. Uh, Biggie has the... The Watchers give. So essentially, both teams have switched builds. As well as in the mid lane, Wizard has gone for the Lost Artifact and Oshida's gone for the uh, the Tiny Tricker. Oh, in the mid lane, Rose already level 5. There's a fan of evil. Wizard is in trouble. How low is he? <gasps> he doesn't go down. Oh my god, El Chuckles with a beautiful taunt. He's going to keep him alive. Oh my god, Wizard. That, how much health and, was that? That was less than 20 at least. <laughs> and Ochida didn't use his Kraken there because he didn't have it in time to catch Wizard. He just got it off a minion wave dying to the tower there. If he had it a couple seconds beforehand, that would have been first by going the way of Avant. As it is Ooh. with Wizard backing, uh, Avant going to take a mid camps now. So very, very a nice. very nice play despite not picking up the first blood. So they're going to take that early golden XP difference. Yeah, and Wizard is going to be up behind on the XP now. He was forced to back while Ochita went for those left camps XP, and he got a bit of the mid lane XP as well. So he's going to have a little bit of an XP advantage. Yeah, very nice plays coming out from Avant there. They want to get ahead early in this one. They're playing from behind for most of last game, and it didn't really suit the way they wanted to play. They like to dictate how the game is played. Uh, and I mean, and most teams do. You, you want to be ahead 
you know, because being ahead is more likely to give you victory. You can't rely on it. And now Biggie belly flops into Kikimi, uses the ultimate, burps him in place, and Subfloor picks up first blood with a rising Jaguar onto Kikiomiya. Oh, and El Chuckles used the Inner of Olympus as well, right at the end. So unfortunately, he, that's going to be on cooldown as well. So that's first blood, very well played there by Afan, and a, and an ultimate from Athena as well. Very, very nice there. Exactly right. That's very unfortunate for El Chuckles. Maybe should have used his ultimate a little bit beforehand, but I yeah, it's it was a it was a tough situation there. Kiki Omiyo not even really caught out of position, just not warding his purple early enough. Biggie being smart enough to rotate through the the back half of the jungle to pick up a kill there and just, you know, laying out his whole kit onto Kiki Omiyo to secure the kill for subfloor. And that uh, as much as people are sick of Tardos talking about, is going to give a stack onto the Sheeper like a passive. It may not be much now, but eventually it'll count towards something. Yeah, that's five power top of Kikio Mio, where even if he's a hidden stacks, he's not really a hidden stacks. Well, you could just add five stacks of Heartseeker to whatever uh, subfloor is on. Um, so Doomorb now picked up for Yada. This is very interesting. I like this a lot because Doomorb is so good and for him to die, he needs to, he's got his ultimate, right? That's going to keep him alive for so much longer in a fight. He can rewind back to when he, where he was five seconds ago with the health. So it's very difficult to kill a Chrono. So getting Doomorb, it's so good because resetting those stacks is so difficult to do. Exactly right. It's, it's a standard kind of pickup on a Chronos. It, it just allows him to put out so much more damage, not only with his auto attacks, but also with his time rift and his other abilities there. He's going to get a stun onto Sporks now, but Sporks showing the, the greatness of that Guan Yu. They're just able to heal up all the damage pretty much straight away. Cronus has also got an inbuilt heal. If he uses his Accelerate in the first quadrant, he just heals up over the next couple of seconds. Mid camps are going to be coming up very soon. Both teams looking to take these ones Avant to keep their lead ahead. Now Biggie and Ro both jump over the wall. Burp onto El Chuckles and Richard Castle, but neither of them going to be stunned out there. But just looking to force them back off these mid camps. Here comes a fight night for... Five members of Avant, only three of Diables. How do you see this one playing out? Oh, it, it, it comes down to where the ultimates are placed. Who has the most mechanical blade? There's a Taunt, there's a Cataclysm, Searing Pain. Hit Subfloor, he's now out of the fight. And that's an 80 carry out of the fight. That's most of the damage except for the Kraken gone. And Yada so, forced oh. to use the Rewind there. And El Chuckles uses the Defender of Olympus on him. Sporks uses the Cavalry Charge as well. Having on to Yada, but nice taunt from El Chuckles. Prevents Sporks and Rode from killing him. Now Sporks extremely low. El Chuckles gets hit with the Intoxicate from Biggie. There's the Burp Stone. Rode picks up the kill there. Those kills were going back and forth there. No one could tell who's going to get. There's the Kraken from Achita onto Yada. And Kiki Omeo not going to pick up a kill. Doing a nice bit of damage there. I thought Sporks was going to die there to El Chuckles for sure, but nice work from Roe and Biggie to peel him away. That was beautiful. Both teams turned it around in favor of each other at some point during that fight, and no one went down in that fight. And even with all the ultimates gone down, no one died. <laughs> that was that was I... awesome. But uh, mid camps, yeah, who did they wow. go in favor? It looked like Dire Wolves. I think so. Yeah, Diabols did get those left camps in the right mid camps. I'm not too sure. I didn't see that, unfortunately. But a very nice play by both teams. Exactly right. I see Kiki going back to the left lane, just trying to farm up it. But yeah, just that, that fight was was incredible. It, it was really good for Avant. I think they actually did manage to pick up a kill on El Chuckles there. Um, did they? A little, yeah, I think when they were peeling oh, El Chuckles yeah. off of Sporks, they managed to take him down. But importantly, uh, they didn't take down Yada and didn't force him to reset his Doom Orb stacks. But yeah, a lot of ultimates being played there. Ochita, unfortunately, not doing as much damage as he would have liked with the Kraken on Poseidon. Yeah, that didn't still, do too but much still damage. Good but... Yeah, exactly right. It's still just good play from Avanto. though. Chuckles looking for the Defender of Olympus onto Yada. He does go down to Sporks, though, and that's Ooh. another Defender of Olympus blown uselessly for the Direwolves. And yeah, that's very, very good for Avant now. 3-0 and oh, and they shut down Yada with those stacks. What? <laughs> they just want to contradict me saying it's very difficult to do, but they just go ahead and shut down the Chrono stacks. <laughs> <laughs> it was Cast smart play because they knew his rewind was down. They knew his rewind yes, was down yeah. after the last fight, so they knew they were safe to kind of aggress upon him and blow a lot of their, 
abilities on him. But now Dai was going to start the gold for you because I know Ro had to back there because he was um, almost on the tail. Biggie uses the belly flop in there. There's the Dark Souls Knights from Gibalanke. There's the Kraken. A cheetah takes down Kiki Amiga. Sub 4 takes down Wizard. Richard forces uses a character because Sub 4 has got a double kill. El Chaco's getting extremely low now. Here comes the guys from Avant Guard. They're going to come out from behind him. There's a Rising Jaguar from Sub 4. Yada is here trying to help. Sub 4 might go down here if he's not careful. El Chaco's picks up a kill there. There's the title search from Ochita. Time rip. Not going to find anything. Chuckles is going to go down here to a cheetah. Yada, you got to be careful. You might go down here. Here's Sporks as well. Oh, There's the Talo Assault. And Cavalry Charge. Re-1 popped now. Yada looking extremely vulnerable. Oh. Yeah, and wow. That was three kills uh, for one. Three to one, I think. Four avant-garde. No, no, four. Because our Chuckles went down there right at the start. Oh, Yada's in trouble. Yeah. Ro is aggressing under the tower. Will the ticks get him with the whirlpool? No, it will not. Hot oh, Rast Snipe does come through, and I think it hit Ochita there. Actually, no, it didn't. Uh, no, no, it didn't. Uh, mid camps will go to a fun. 7 and 1 looking very strong compared to the last game. They're, they are on top of this early game. But Die Wolves, in amongst all of that, got the Gold Fury. Yeah. They got the Gold Fury. Very nice. So, so that that's the elite. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's 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 okay. I was just gonna say that really kind of lowers the gold difference that Avant Guard was hoping to have there. If we take a look at our graphs. It's a twenty eight hundred XP, no, sorry, three thousand XP difference in favor of Avant Guard, but only a seven hundred gold difference. Not terribly significant at this point. Yeah. The gold fury, very nice for Diewolves to pick up there. And that was all those kills. That was four kills for Avant. That really evened it up. They were almost taken back the lead. They're about halfway back into what they were at before the gold fury was stolen by Avanka, but very nice steal by Richard Castle. Exactly I love his right, name, by the way, Richard Castle. I like how you, I like <laughs> it's how you say it's a great television show. It is, it, it is indeed. Ten out of ten would recommend. So Richard Castle now rotating back to assist Kiki, his brother of Medusa. Uh, hmm. So three and one is sub four. He's got fifteen extra extra physical power pop of his Asai Heartseeker. That is that is a, a lot of physical power that he's never gonna lose now. And that's that's the seventh item slot coming into play. Exactly right. This is when the, the Jibalanke passive is most effective is in this mid game and with a couple kills on him, he's gonna start to do a lot of extra damage. Like both him and Kiki have got the same build, the same stacks on their heart seekers at this point. Subfloor's got a double beads though at the moment, so he's going to have that's where that extra gold's going to come into play a little bit. But he's going to be hitting harder than Kiki, it's going to be very hard for Kiki to box. He's really going to need to dodge and weave expertly in order to win a, a boxing match. In the mid lane, we can see a three man grouping. Yeah, nothing too aggressive coming out. Um, but uh, being able to dodge and weave is much easier to do on Medusa because of her passive sidewinder. It reduces the movement speed lost while moving sideways or moving backwards. So it's it's much easier to dodge while auto attacking or like being on the backside of a box or just in general the movement speed is very good. Or oh, in the mid lane though, Row with the Fiano Evil onto Wizard is gonna get him. Not too much damage actually down there. There's the Kraken onto El Chuckles though, and he's going to go down to Ro. Hot Rust Knight comes through. Only hits Oshida though. Oh wow. Okay. So that's. Goodness, three... the damage there. Yeah, the three ultimates down. That's the Barker. Oh, Barkus didn't even ult there. Three ultimates down no. there. No. Yeah, that was, a, that was a great play there from Avant. I said at the start in the picks and bands, it was going to be a nice combination between Ro and a cheetah with the Fino Evil and the Kraken. And we saw a cheetah do a Kraken before near the Fire Giant, not really do too much damage, but now he's picked up his shoes of the Magi and he's got an enchanted spear to start getting some penetration. And he just yeah. did so much damage to El Truckles there. Mm hmm. That was, that was a lot. And it's on top of the whirlpool. As soon as that Spear of the Magus gets completed, that's going to do truckloads of damage. Like, it is, oh, a, <laughs> a Kraken with, with, uh, whirlpool on top of a, a Spear of the Magus is just one of the scariest things in the game. Oh, it looks like Yada's going to get a Gris on Rose there. Does he have the Fear? No, even though he doesn't, Defender of Olympus comes out from El Chuckles before Yada dies this time. So. That's going to keep them safe, all torn out from Sporks, and El Chuckle's doing quite a lot of damage, and he's only got the Shoes of Focus. 
If finally, a defender of Olympus falls for Chuckles there. I think he was wanting to get that one off and uh, he did it uh, a little bit early, but he is safer to do that and still a good play there, making sure Yard didn't fall. Once again, trying to keep Yarda from resetting those Doom Orb stacks. Now the Gold Fury being looked at from Avant. Subfloor starting it up here. A little bit of a risky play because Richard is just around the corner. Here comes everyone else and their mothers now. Biggie jumping over the wall, <laughs> forcing out Kiki Omeo and Richard Castle. A little bit of a bait there from Avant. And they're going to keep it keep it going. Everyone from Diables is here now. Yard is rotating across. He can come across pretty fast with his accelerator if he wants to. Yeah, and Sports has already arrived, so this is definitely in favor for Avant right now. But Yado is here, and he's his DPS is so strong that Chronos late game is one of the scariest things in, in terms of DPS. He's up there with the hunters. He just can't crit. That's the thing about Yada, uh, Chronos. Sorry. But Yada is playing him, and he loves his AD carries. He plays them very, very well. And the fight is about to begin. Chuckles, he's got his preemptive strike charged up. Biggie and Sporks are doing a very good job of zoning. Who will this go to, though? Will the taunt come out? Okay, Avant to get that one. First goal fury of the series. Sporks in a little bit of trouble. There's the cavalry charge coming up. Feno Evil and Hawk last night did go down. Wizard, will he be picked off first? Cracking down onto Yada, but he's got the rewind. Sporks is going to go down. Cataclysm was put down as well. And Kikio Mio trapped between a rock and two members of Avan. Oh, but Yada's turning this fight around. It's two for two at the moment. And Biggie's gonna go down. No, he won't. He does have the body slam. He's gonna get out of there. And South Floor, 1v3. Where's the taunt? Will he be able to get out? Does he have the Rising Jaguar? No, he's gonna get taunted. He's got the Rising Jaguar now. And he... Oh my god, the DPS. This is so difficult. Husey, will he live? No, he won't. Oh. Yada. Time Very rip. nice. The time rip. Now Biggie's come back. And El Chakos is going to try and get him there with the taunt and the rally. There's a spear throw. Biggie, please get out, man. And he does. Chuckles realizing he doesn't want to hang around too much longer. He's not aware of where Ro is. And Biggie could have been just hanging him around. Chuckles was low enough where if Ro had come in, he would have cleaned him up there. So some smart play from Chuckles there. And now this 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 fight kind of normalized things a little bit from Diables. I think even though the gold and XP kind of uh, went in favor of Avant there, especially with the pickup of the Gold Fury, kind of just a psychological thing, picking up a few kills, because it's better to be uh, have four kills than just have one, even if you are still down um, a fair number in that department. If we take mm -hmm. a look at our graphs, 2,000 gold now in favor of Avant, 4,600 XP. This is the position we start to see him snowball. Mm-hmm. Oh... That swagger time rift through the wall. Yada was just like, I'm not even going to look. He just time rift and then walked away and he got the kill onto uh, subfloor. That was, that was beautiful. But Ronau is 4-0. Oh. He has not died this game. Who else hasn't died? Uh, Biggie is the only other person to not die in this entire game. 10-4 to four are the kills. Like you said, this is, this is the point where we start to see snowballs coming out. But... Direwolves with a Kronos and a Medusa are just uh, just so strong late game, especially the Kronos. Oh, Fenno Evil, speaking of Kronos, down on towards him, and the Defender of Olympus coming through as well. Oh, okay, so just a few ultimates being popped there. Nothing too aggressive. No one's going to take any damage. Yeah, it's, it's just going to be kind of a reset at this point. A cheater rotating in behind El Chuckles, who he spotted on a sentry ward there. Maybe looking to pick him off between Rowan and Sporks, but nothing really going to come of it. And yeah, things just kind of balancing out a little bit. The kind of calm before the storm at this point. Mm-hmm. And I want to see the storm. This is I, I want to see <laughs> both teams in a team fight like we just saw, because every single player is playing their role too close to per perfection. It's it's so amazing to see. And they trust in each other, like you mentioned before, and the synergy between them all is just beautiful to see. Every single player on the map right now is so good at their role. Exactly right. And as well as that, as you mentioned, the teamwork is there between the teams. So it's better to have a superstar team than a team of superstars. So even though, so it's just a benefit to have both when you've got a team that's all individually very skilled players, as well as that having a team that communicates well and works well together, it's mm -hmm. just fantastic. And that's why we see these two teams at the top of the ladder. Yeah, they, like you said, uh, <laughs> there's so much <laughs> going on. It's it's crazy. I'm mind boggled. Uh, so. 
uh, having both superstars and a, a superstar team is just, it's so good, and that's why they're at the top. And uh, these two teams are, hands down, uh, statistically as well, the best in OCE right now. It's going to be fantastic as well when it comes to PAX time, as yeah, well as that, so to see Split 2 when we actually have the Pro League, which starts up in mid-July, to see what other teams come through and are going to be contesting in the Pro League, and just to see how much these teams can improve by then. Mm -hmm. Guys, while we're in this little bit of downtime of both teams not aggressing, make sure you tweet hashtag... Uh, a DW win or hashtag AV win to at CG Smite or Team Down TV. I'm not too sure. CG, CG Smite. Smite on Twitter to see who will win. Who place your vote right now? Oh, and now the mid camp speaker gets taunted in. Will a Kraken go down from a cheater? He's on the backside just waiting. Oh, those mid camps will go to Direwolves. And interestingly, Subfloor is not here at the moment. He's just gone back, gone back to base. So if Dialwars want to aggress here, the, the Avant Guard boys are going to be missing a lot of their DPS. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they need him. Because Yara and Kikiomiyo, the two DPS uh, characters for Dialwars right now. And having two DPS in most cases is a lot better than having one. Or none. <laughs> <laughs> but the Kraken coming out from Ochita is going to do work, and now they're contesting this Gold Fury. Husey, which which way do you think this is going to go? Well, it depends, because this Gold Fury is a tight grouping. If Ochita can get a nice Kraken off and do a lot of damage to a lot of members of Dialwolves, it's going to be easy for Avant Guard to pick him up. On the flip side of that, the amount of CC that the Dialwolves can put out with the um, Athena and the Geb, it's going to be a little bit hard for him. But now Rogue does a nice Vino Evil onto four members of Dialwolves. There is a hot Rast Knight from Wiz. There comes a Kraken, takes down a lot of health onto Kiki. Biggie managed to pick up the kill. Richard Castle uses a Cataclysm. Nice taunt from Chuckles, picks up a kill onto Achita. Now him and Yala are going heavily into the rest of Avant Guard, but Wizza is hanging around the backside. Ro picks up a kill onto Yada El Chuckles. Quad out a little bit here. Nice shield from Richard. There is the preemptive strike to get him out of trouble, but Wizza needs to back off here, otherwise he might go down. And Avant Guard going to be pretty much free to take down this Gold Fury. Wizza can't really do much, but here comes the defender of Olympus from El Chuckles. He might be able to dive in and seal this one if he is particularly careful but being body blocked nicely by Sporks and Row. Chuckles, can he do it? Nice taunt! Diewolves take the Gold Fury! He's got to kill, kill it! Onto, onto Subfloor as well. Chuckles needs to get out of here now. The heal's coming through from Wizard. Keep him alive. Chuckles is out. He comes right over the top. A nice shield there from Richard Castle. Oh my goodness, Diewolves took that and Chuckles got out alive. Oh my god. Chuckles, please. Through all that body blocking from Sporks and Row. They, they were stopping him for about a good seven seconds and he still got in and he still stole it and wizard with a hot rust snipe picking up subfloor oh my god direwolves beautiful play beautiful. very beautiful play it was fantastic work and, and that's, oh that's got to even up the gold lead to, to 300 but still in a bunt but 300 gold is not that much that's a uh, one no. active tier, one active tier, unless yeah. it's Girdle, which is 200, but anyways. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> oh my god! Great fight from Diables. Great fight, great fight, and it's exactly yeah. what they needed to do. Even though a couple of them fell there and they had to steal away the Gold Fury, they, as we said, still normalized that gold lead, and it's another psychological thing as well. And now they take the tier 1 tower on the left, that'll be the second tower to fall. Yada's solo tower did fall earlier, but... It's a psychological aspect to it as well, because Smite is a mental game as well as an electronic game. And that kind of <laughs> swagger you pick up from getting a nice steal like that really not only pumps you up as a player who's solo, but as a team. Fear no evil coming up from Rogue, forcing Wizard to pop his beads on the tower. Sporks uses the coverage charge. Nice snipe there from Wizard, but Ochita gonna pick up a kill with the Cracker. Chuckles under his tower, defending furiously, forcing Sporks to come back on the tower. There's the Darkest of Night from Gibalanke. There's a Cataclysm from Richard Cars as well. Sporks taking a lot of tower damage there, but he's just been healing himself up nicely. Ro extremely low. Sporks needs to use a heal to get him out of trouble, but Ro gonna run away in time. Dial was here looking to get a kill. Nice talk from our Chuckles on the big in subfloor. Beads burnt from subfloor. Biggie getting extremely low. Not enough to kill him though from the Dial's time rift. Sorry, yeah, time rift was just off from Yada. Oh my goodness. Avant guard showing some cojones there. Just driving <laughs> Dialwolves under tower.
Yeah, and Die Wars, even though it's 4v5 right now, they're still aggressing to this tier 1 tower in the mid lane. Will Avant turn it around? They've got the ultimate only on Sporks. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think they can with the with the Fear No Evil being on cooldown right now, because that's that's the main initiation apart from Biggie's uh, belly flop and intoxicate combo. Defender of Olympus now onto Kiki Omiya. O Chuckles will rejoin the fight. And now it's four versus four, but Ro is off the side in the jungle. Fear No Evil's back up. It's back up. They're looking to they're looking to engage here. They want this mid tower. Biggie's warding up the fire giant. They feel like if they can get a pick here, it'll be a fire giant and then possibly a couple of towers. They probably won't get any phoenixes as there's still tier ones up. But now Dai was recognizing the threat at the fire giant. All of the Vanguard are grouped up. Oh wow. They're there's the Fino Evil onto Yada. Forced to use the shield and the real one. Hot Ras Knight comes through. Doesn't manage to pick up a kill though. Nice taunt from Chuckles to peel away the rest of Avant Guard. But that is two ultimates down for the Dire Wolves for the cost of one from Avant Guard. And now Subfloor gonna start the Fire Giant here. This could go the way of Avant Guard. Oh, Biggie with the belly flop now on to Wizard. He's he's under the soul of this thing, so he's staying alive for so long, down to 50% HP. There's so much going on. Intoxicate, intoxicate did go down. Ro picked up Yada. That's so much DPS now gone for Direwolves and Avant with the advantage for, oh wow, Subfloor very low, taunt from El Chuckles, Petrify onto Row. Kiki Omiyo is gonna pick that kill up, now Biggie is in so much trouble, will he go down, Kiki's gonna pick him up again, that's a double kill for Kiki Omiyo, and that turnaround of the fight, Avant had the uh, advantage, and now Subfloor's trying to recall oh the tier 1 tower, but three people now dying of diving at taunt it does go down Kiki with the unofficial triple three people in that fight from Avant went down with only one from Dire Wolves is that the this fire is a fire giant, giant. it's a fire Sports giant is up and so is Oshida Oshida is nowhere close he's still in the mid lane at the Phoenix yeah. but yeah that's and, a fire and... giant Sporks doesn't have Hog 3. He's got Hog 2. So he's not going to be able to really steal this one away. Unless a severe misplay occurs from the Direwolves. And here we go. Down it goes. Direwolves pick up the first Fire Giant of this fight. Wow. I think five minutes ago, none of us would have expected that. They pick up some mid camps as well. Great fighting from Direwolves. These teams. My goodness. Direwolves are I showing in this I game know, right? what, what Avant didn't quite show in that last game. Was the ability to sort of uh, take a... a Sorry, to fall behind early and then come back a little bit. Avant, mm -hmm. in the last game, they fell behind early. Didn't ever really come to manage to get back up. Um, while Dai was still uh, aren't in the lead, if we look at our graphs, the XP difference is 500 or 600 in favor of Avant. But the goal now is 1,700 in favor of Dai So it's almost fair to say these teams are about equal at this point. And Dai mm -hmm. going for the gold fury just to get an even bigger gold no advantage. One. Possibly wow. experience here as well. So Dai was really showing what the point I was trying to make, that to come from behind and, and still com compete and maybe even regain the lead, maybe take this game. The way that they're playing at the moment, the last 5-10 minutes they've really been switched on and on fire, doing lots of things correct and just outplaying Avant at this point. And they're definitely on fire with the fire giant now. Ro is pushing though. Oh, very, very interesting. And Avant are aggressing against a fire giant buffed up team. Oh, and speak of solar blessings and heals, Ra utility base, full cooldown with Lotus Crown. That is Wizard right now. His solar blessings are going to be healing for so much and keep the team sustained while sieging or in a team fight for so much longer than if it was something like an Agni, because obviously, well, no heals. But compared to a Guan Yu, Ra is going to heal a lot more than a Guan Yu. Because one thing that's that's in no no you got yeah it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I was just gonna <laughs> um <laughs> one thing that's interesting is that even though he's gone that full kind of utility build and conversely a cheat has gone a bit more damagey he doesn't have that he's only got a thousand less damage now Dai was aggressing onto this mid tower here and we're gonna take gonna be able to use the cavalry, cavalry charge onto Yada and Wizza. Sporks taken very low now. There's the Petrified from Kiki, not able to pick up a kill. Yada uses the rerun very nicely, Ooh. but here's Ro with the Fear No Evil onto Yada. He doesn't have an escape now. There's the shield from Richard Castle. Richard Castle trying to come in and save his teammate. Biggie's there as well. Yada could go down here. He's got to run away. Oh my goodness, how did oh, he get he's out still of there? Alive. 
Barose in the back line. Maybe looking to pick up a kill if Yada backs, but no, Yada's going to stay in the fight. Get healed up from Wizard. That's the power Look of that. the Ra heal. Look and that's that. the power that... of the utility. Yeah, that it's incredible. basically did like 50% of his entire health bar. And Biggie but belly flops in, but he gets taunted in as well and knocked up. And Wizard picks up the kill. That was a 1v5 against a fire giant team. Hot Rouse Snipe does hit. Bro forces him to get back to the Phoenix. Torn onto subfloor. He doesn't have his speeds up. Will he go down? No, he won't. He's got to stay alive. Yes, yes he will. He will make it back to the Phoenix. And Kiki will go down to the Phoenix. Oh, wow, Ro picks that one up. And... Yada now in trouble as well. Ochita gets the kill there. El Chuckles forced to defender of Olympus away. And Diable, three of Diables are going to make it out of there. Rose going to keep chasing. But they did get a Phoenix. They got a Phoenix yep. for two. But that was both the DPS, which is why they had to get out. That's pretty much all their damage because Wizard has gone with the utility build instead of the damage build. Yeah, very, very smart play there for Diables, recognizing the need to get out when they did. As you said, a lot of their damage down as well, especially with El Chuckles being an Athena jungle. Avant going to pick up a mid tower here. Back to what I was saying before, I think people may have missed it. Is, and now especially, we look at our damage graphs. Oh no, fight breaking out in the mid lane. Nice cataclysm there for Richard Castle. Here comes Athena, we will row extremely low here. Chuckles, Wizard and Richard defending that tower expertly. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice defense there. It's a 3v5 situation. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes it was, wow, beautiful. Yeah, but they exactly all right. But they have fire giants, so... Oh, actually no, it just timed out. Wow, that was like yeah, two seconds. Yeah, just timed out. <laughs> <laughs> very close. Okay, hopefully I can get this point out now before something else happens. These two teams are very aggressive, Quick. so we're playing it by ear. <laughs> so the player damage on Poseidon and Ra is almost equal. I think Wizards got about 500 less than Ochita at this point in the game, which is very interesting considering the difference in builds here. Where, as we said, Wizard's gone a bit more utility, Ochita's gone a bit more aggressive, but Wizard's got more more magical power at this point. I think that's hmm. It's because of the penetration from the spear from Ochita. It deals more damage, but you can't really see the number of it. Basically, um, he's going for what looks like a gem of isolation or a warlock sash, but it is a bit late to be start to start stacking a Warlock Sash. So I'm assuming a Gem of Isolation. That thing is very good, slows the enemies on your abilities and gives you a decent amount of health and mana. One might say it is a scumbag item on Poseidon, but anyways, it's, it's very <laughs> difficult to get, about, to get out of a Whirlpool yeah. when you're slowed and slowed because of the Whirlpool and Crippled. But anyways... Yep. Scumbag is just what people call it when they're outsmarted. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and now a cheater nice. getting is in between most of Diables. He's looking to get down a female evil in order to um, get his team in position, but not going to really find it. They use the sacred monkey to get some poke damage down. Wizard going to heal that all up for his team with wow. the solar blessing. That Ra heal is so good. They're, they're able to stay around for as long as they want. Oh, there's the jump in from Bro, but the Fiona Evil did not go down. There it is, actually. Yada is forced to rewind. Pitchify did come out from Kiki Omiyo, but didn't do much. Kraken now down. Yada takes quite a lot of damage from that Cataclysm as well. Torn and hot. Rastite dealing so much damage to Avant. And a Biggie actually picked up Wizard there. Kiki picks up uh, Biggie. There's so many names that rhyme, Kiki and Biggie. And, uh, <laughs> the chase now by Diablos against Avant. They've, they've got them on the back foot, but it's 4v4 right now. Yeah, it's... What? <sighs> this is great play. This game is Diables. crazy. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, Diablos but... playing extremely strong at the moment. And as you said, you know, just taking down You're one player for another. Neither of these teams is really giving an inch. But Avant, we usually see when they get a lead, they just capitalize on it and no one can, can come back from it. But the Diables have managed to do that this game. Now they're starting the Fire Giant, a little bit of a bait. El Chuckles taunting in Ochita. There's the Whirlpool coming down there. Tidal Surge doesn't manage to hit anyone. Ro uses the Fino Evil to escape from Kiki Omiya, but Kiki's still going. There's the overhead smash. Chuckles picks up Ro, but Ro gets up Kiki in the back play. Ochita gonna go down to El Chuckles. Sporks is the only one around at this point. If he goes to El Chuckles, this could be a Fire Giant, but Subfloor is here with a Gibalanke who's going to be doing immense amounts of damage and Diables forced to back off of this now as Yada is extremely low. 
And look at the items. Subfloor is only on a tier one rage compared to Kiki, who has a completed range. Rage, and that's those three gold furies now coming into play. That's forty-five thousand, forty-five hundred gold for all of Direwolves, and that's nine hundred gold per player for Direwolves, and th that's that is massive. That is huge. Yep. Yep. Interesting item pick on Yada here has gone for a combat blink. Wow. Okay. Mm. <laughs> on a Chrono. Very in interesting. I guess. I guess for just extra escapability, like they don't feel like they need yeah. another item. Firstly, Sporks has gone for a weakening curse, which they feel like they need with those raw heals. No anti healing really coming out from the side of the dials. I guess they're not really feeling the pressure from it. But yeah, the combat blink. I'm interested to see how that one will be used in this game. And no anti-healing from Avan either. The Ra is doing so much uh, dealing. He's giving so much health to his team during these sieges, during these team fights, and pre-fights as well. Ooh. And I, th I think the combat blink is because of how aggressive Ro is on towards Yada. Uh, it f he's forcing him to rewind, but then he'll keep chasing. His target is Yada. He's got a giant X on his back. Uh, so he, he needs another escape. So he has picked up that uh, that combat blink, and it'll be interesting to see a a chrono stinking. I've I've never actually <laughs> seen that. <laughs> but um, I think this... yeah, the uh, the only anti healing from Avant, as I mentioned before, is that weakening curse. But that's not. I don't think it's consistent enough. I would like to see something more like a divine ruin, um, yeah. or so, or something of that nature. But. Yeah, they've only got, uh, they've only really got uh, a cheater to do that. Now, Fire Giant being started by Dials, looking to get a bait onto Avant. If they can find a pick here, they'll be able to take this one and maybe finish the game down the mid lane if they rush it properly. But no, they're going to reset it now. Just looking for a pick. Rogue getting aggressed upon by most of Dials here. Here comes a fight that we've been waiting for. Rogue, there's the Darkest of Knights from Subfall. Cavalry Charge just walked. Kraken Whirlpool combo onto Wizard. He's going to go down to a cheater. Nice petrify from Kiki on oh Sporks and Biggie. There we go. Here comes Sporks. Going to take... Oh, a Chuckles gets down to Cheetah. Ro takes down Kiki. Richard going to fall to Ro as well. It's just Chuckles and Yada left up. Yada running all through the members of the Dire Wolf, uh, the Avant Guard. There is the... Uh, Defender of Olympus from El Chuckles. Ro very low. Chuckles takes him out. Yada doing a nice amount of damage to Supple. Gonna pick him up here. It's 2 on 2. Can Yada and Chuckles turn this one around onto Sporks and Biggie? Sporks feeling the brunt of the attack from the Diawls at this point. That was 4v2 and now it's 2v2. That was. The damage coming from Yada is immense. There is the, the Belt of the Gods and Biggie. Will he go down? No, he's still alive. Does he have the belly flop? No, he doesn't. Not just yet. The damage Yada picks him up with a time rift and Sporks is the only one alive. That turnaround. That was oh. 4v2 against Direwolves. And Direwolves turned it into a 2v1. They were able to pick up three kills in that situation. That was Yada and Al Chuckles. That was beautiful. That was great. Oh my gosh. <laughs> to yeah. be fair though... Most of Avant had taken quite a lot of damage from that fight, and Ro went down uh, to uh, after to who was it? Oh, Chuckles. Yeah, oh, Chuckles is dealing so much damage as well. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, he's got so much that... defense as well. Yeah, he's it's, got I, he's got I breastplate. The... He's got mid guardian mail. He's got magi's. He's got ethereal staff, which is the big yeah. one because he gets a yeah. ton of health from it, as well as it converting health to magical power. So if we look at Chuckles now, he's he's only got a hundred magical power. Which is relatively little compared to a mage like Poseidon or Ra. But still, it's it, the scaling on the shield wall. If you do, if you hit them twice, oh, Gold Fury gonna fall here to the Dire Wolves. Oh, very nice. Yep, there it goes. The, the, the scaling on the shield wall, if you hit them once, um, you almost, if you hit them twice, you do almost double the damage on the second one as you do on the first. So you, if you hit them twice with it, you essentially do triple the damage as if you hit them once. Mm hmm. It's, it's oh, and there's the weakening curse wow. coming out from Sporks the Wizard, so he's not going to get any healing from his Solar Blessing. Subfloor takes him out there. Nikki is going to be trying to fight it out here, forced to use his bees, but he's getting extremely low. Now comes down the Fear No Evil. Nice petrified from Kiki, for freezes Sporks the place. Chuckles extremely low, forced to dash out. Biggie belly flopping in. A violent going to take this to him. Nice Kraken from Machida Yada, forced to rewind. Chuckles is going to go down to Ro. Yada. 
running away for his life now. Ochiti uses a whirlpool to force him out, but now Avant are gonna group and look for the fire giant. Spork's gonna stay on this mid tower, just do a couple uh, more ticks of damage to it, but here comes the fire giant. Diables should try and contest this. They might be able to steal it if they get across in time. Avant going so. on it very heavily now. Yeah, it's mm. not gonna look like it's, it's way gonna too fast. Um, yeah, it, mm. Avant just burning it down. Yeah, it's so much Oh, but Richard, he's staying. Richard doesn't realize it's down. What's he doing? Oh, he's no. still here. Shielding it. There's the whirlpool. Oh, Richard caught oh, out of position here. He's going to go down. Oh, no, Richard. Oh, Ro oh picks Richard. That one up. And now he's 12 and 3. Ro is 12 and 3. He's got... He's literally half of the team's kills. 24 to 17 Goodness. are the kills in favor of Avant. Daiwal's doing very well, like we mentioned before, playing from behind. It's maybe the game. Fire Giant and a right Phoenix being taken. Oh, Ro going Rowe hard onto Yada now. Use the Fear No Evil. There's a second. Oh my god, Ro teleported into the fountain. Look at the amount of damage he's taking. There is the kill from Wizard onto Ro. Oh my goodness, the combat blink. That was the combat blink. Yada. Jeez. And now Biggie Yada. getting extremely low. There's the hot strike from Wizard. Oh my god, what a play. Now Daiwal's going to be able to turn this one around because their main damage dealer, Ro, is eh, petrified from Kikiomina. Going to slow down Biggie and do enough damage to take him out. And now a cheetah, subplot, and Swox are all that's left. Diwolves could turn this around and take out the middle Phoenix to win if they if they play their cards right here, or they might be able to just get them extremely low. But my goodness, the combat that blink combat proving blink. its worth. That combat blink though, Yada. <laughs> oh my god. But will will Avant be able to hold on? They've got th uh, three people. Mo uh, two of them are the damage dealers, and they do have a tank as well. But Spawn Seek is ta uh, taunted in, and he's going to take quite a lot of damage. And Kiki's going to dive him out the tower, and Yada picks him up. Sports goes down under Phoenix. Wow. And that Phoenix already went down, so it's going to be much yep, easier. It's to really take low. Down. And now oh, Sub. Last night doesn't hit Sub floor. And it's just the game. This, this could be game! Easy. What? Could be game, that's a Kraken, but it's not going to be enough. A cheetah! Support picks up Wizard in the back plate, but Richard Castle gets a kill onto a cheetah. Here's Rogue, can he save it? There's the Fino Evil! Rogue picks up Kiki oh. Omiya, the Titan's extremely low now! 6%, it's on less 2%. Than a it's dead! That's what? game! Game! To Dialogues, take out our Vanguard! 2 and 0! Oh. What just happened? Oh my god! Oh my god! Dialogues they went, we went camera. from... We went from the right-hand side Phoenix of Dialus being taken out by Avant through to the middle Phoenix of Avant being taken down again and then game from Dialus in under a minute. What? What? Yeah. What? I don't even they know, They turned around man. a Fire Giant <laughs> buff aggression onto their own Phoenix and then took it back to Avant Guard and, and killed them and finished it and won the series. And now both teams are tied at the top of the Invitational Ladder, forcing a best of three play to determine who takes the top spot and takes the 1500 gems home to their significant others to spend on skills, but uh, <laughs> spend on skins. But oh my goodness, the the combat blink from Yada. Yeah. Holy, let's talk about holy that. Holy cow. That was Paul beautiful. Rowe, that was a great. It was a great play from Rowe to try and take out Yada, a massive damage dealer. But then he he blinked into fountain and he takes a fountain shot. <laughs> that was. <laughs> I have to say it was pretty funny, but really unfortunate for Rowe. But really, really well played there by Yada. And that turnaround, oh my goodness. that entire turnaround from Direwolves, GG well played to the Direwolves, taking out the series 2-0 yeah. against the Avant. What we thought was impossible. We have got another raffle. Yeah. Do we? Oh, oh Yeah, some just, extra hype, guys. Extra yeah, hype, icing on the cake. another raffle. I'm not going to enter this one, I promise. <laughs> that, oh my and it's gosh. a Jandroid skin. Janus Jandroid skin. One of the greatest skins and voice packs in the game. So you'd be crazy not to enter this one. You, all you have to do is follow the channel and then go exclamation mark raffle to enter. We'll be drawing that one very soon. Uh, I want to talk about but that game. game. Let's talk about this oh game. Oh my okay. goodness. So that fight at the fire Oof. giant. That was, okay, before we talk about that, that was so back and forth. The steal from El Chuckles and the Gold Fury. What? That was... Yeah. That was absolutely amazing. Very good uh, turnaround there. There was four Gold Furies to one in that... Uh, in that in that game and Direwolves got every single goal fury in this entire series except for one and that was this game yeah uh, so the the goal fury um i'm not sure what the word for it is prioritization possibly that's yeah. a good word uh the it, it did come in handy through the entire thing and they were able to snowball off that and what when 
Avant took that first uh, Gold Fury, we thought, all right, they're going to snowball off that. But Yada, with the damage coming out, 31,000 up there with Kiki as well, 33,000. They, they turned the fights around. And the heals from Wizza, he healed 13,200 health for his entire team. They, they kept them alive for so long. That was that was beautiful play coming mm. out from Dire Wars. And very great strategic play as well from Avant-Garde. But Dire Wars did take this one out. And yeah. that's, like you said, going to tie it up. They had to 2-0, get the tie. And they did mm. it. That was that was great. That was beautiful. The, the, gold, the gold Fury control and the general map control from Dire Wars... It was it was immense, and that the gold that they got from those gold furies dragged them back into the game. At one point they were down eight one, and it looked like they were, it was going to be yeah. forcing a best of three series. But just they clawed themselves back into it, showing the grit and determination necessary to take on a team like Avant Garde. Now it's going to force a best of three series that will be cast later on this week. That'll be an immensely hyped game as well for determining mm -hmm. top spot on the invitational ladder. And now here we go. The raffle is in and Rotten Melons has won the raffle. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations, Melons. Hottest grill gamer OCE. That's what you get for being a sub for Dire Wolves. <laughs> he was sitting on the <laughs> sidelines. Oh, I really wish I could play. I hope someone is, yeah. you know, but <laughs> congratulations, uh, Mr. Rock. Congratulations, Melons. Melons. Looks like Dire Wolves is winning all over the shop tonight. Okay, folks, that will do it for me and Nightfall and this match. Next up, you will have the lovely Ranconias and the especially lovely Timmy. Casting I... the games between Team Kamikaze and Cognitive Click. Yeah, Cog. I'm excited to watch that one. I want to see how well exactly they right. play with the a new, new sponsor. sponsorship. I know. It's... Yeah, they've got a new coach and everything. See some very hype plays coming out from those ones. Team Kamikaze really looking for a win. They've only had one this Invitational Ladder split against Silicon. Of course, getting a free win against Kraken Up due to Kraken Up splitting up be uh, before the end of the invitation ladder but team kamikaze really looking for that confidence going into the pro league qualifiers but as i said that will do it for us for now i have been husey joining me was nightfall mm -hmm. hello i mean goodbye it's the end of <laughs> us but not the end of yep. the stream guys stick around cognitive click versus t cam we'll be right back <laughs> Thank you.